Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Let me say this. Thanks to French Quarter's guest apartments for being our New York City hotel. Let them be your headquarters in New York City. Go to FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. That's FrenchQuartersNY.com to book your next day. My next guest I've known for a long time. Uh, we're friends. And she, she used to work for the New York Post. That's when I met her, and she was always kind to me there. And she uh, hosts the podcast News Whore now, which I'm going to be a guest on. We're taping it tomorrow. Yep, I I'm can't really excited. I can't wait. Here's Mandy Statmiller. Hi. What's up, Mandy? How you doing? Hello. So you are keeping the sunglasses off. Yeah, no, for you. It's, That's uh, you just know, for the hot chicks. Uh, exactly. For the ladies, I like to let them see my... Stare into my eyes. My hazel eyes. Yeah. <laughs> what the... So now you, what did you... You just said that somebody found... Uh, some critic found uh, Courtney Love's phone in a cab? What did yeah, the, what Frank Bruni from The Times yeah. tweeted today right. and said, I found what is clearly Courtney Love's phone <laughs> in my cab. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone wow. know how I can get it back to her? That's hilarious. Yeah, so there was a whole New York Magazine piece about the tweets back and forth, and it kind of seems like the most genius coordinated publicity stunt of all time. Absolutely, right? it does, yeah. Because yeah. that's what I'm, I'm always thinking about. Like the game behind the game. Right. How do you, you know, whenever, Which, like I was, I just finished your book, and so even with something like, Joe Buck or right. Kanye and uh, Swift at yeah. the MTV. Like, I'm always like, is that really, you know <laughs> Well, what that's mean? how you think. You're right. the ultimate New York cynic, <laughs> which is a compliment. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, that you're the ultimate because you, you work in the, in the media and in the post and then, you know, you've seen it all. So you're trying to figure out the angle, right? I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in a way, well, I think that my first realization that everything had an angle was when... I was being given a quote from a movie producer who said, now just say this, uh, this this movie is gonna be huge, says one, one insider. And it was like, with that, I just realized every insider all, yes, is the yeah, dude. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Says one insider. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Insiders are the best. He's, he's, writing, he's doing your job, he's writing it verbatim, literally. Totally. Yeah. You yeah. have no freedom at all, like, say yeah. it this way. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I wonder how you know it's Courtney Love's phone, I guess. Well, I, I mean, I, th I think I think it was, and I think it was really just one of those true, actual, amazing New York stories because he was able to figure it out because the text messages kept coming up. He Googled one of the names, mm -hmm. and it was something that was so clearly related to her. Really? Yeah, and so I tweeted back at him because Joe Garden, who used to be with The Onion, knows that I'm friends with her. Yeah. And he said, just give it to Mandy, you know? And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I gave the office, I gave the address um, for exojane.com yeah, where yeah, I work. Yeah. And um, I said, drop it off here, we'll get it to her. But I guess immediately her manager had uh, reached out and right. coordinated. Well, the, my <laughs> but John Cook from Gawker also immediately tweeted and said, we'll pay $10,000 for the phone or oh, whatever, God. right? Oh, God, that was my yo, man. <laughs> That's a thing. If it's, people would do that. Oh, totally. Well, oh. John Cook is the one who did what they called the crack starter campaign to raise money to pay the sketchy drug dealers yeah. for the Toronto mayor's right. um, crack video. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, the, 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 let me, like, what is the legal situation there? If, if he did pay for that phone and got yeah. the phone, could he print? Well, uh, well, the thing is, is I mean, legally? Gawker is so much more, um, I feel like, money rich in terms of their legal liability. They're the ones who ran the Tom Cruise Scientology video. So they just don't care. Um, I mean, they can afford it. I mean, I think it's always they like... They can afford to be sued? Yeah, I think yeah. to a certain extent. I mean, they've been <laughs> sued a lot. They just don't oh, care. yeah, they've been sued tons. Gawker yeah. has... Now, is it just because the people behind Gawker are richer? That, does I Gawker mean, I think generate... Nick Denton's definitely a millionaire, and he's very, every year, it just gets bigger and bigger. I, I met with From John... Gawker, or was he originally? Yeah, well, he's got he's got Gawker, he's got uh, Jezebel, he's got uh, Gizmodo, before he um, had to kind of get in a brand alignment. They had a flesh spot. Uh, but but I think they got sick of the cheap shot that everyone was able to to take and say, oh yeah, smut purveyor Nick Denton, yeah. and he was like, well, I'll drop that. Well, that's, from where the catalog. that's where a lot of money comes from, though. But I'm sure. I, but, I don't you know, know though. Fleshbot is kind of, I don't I, know. I don't know the names behind the names. Like yeah. Walker is a guy Fleshbot, named John. Denton. Let me just tell you. I mean, well, I probably can't say the names of like good porn video sites right, on right. air, right? But anyway. <laughs> That's not one of them. Fleshbot is more like an analysis of porn, which isn't what most people are looking for. But you the know? guy behind Gawker, what's his name? Is it John Denton? No, no, no. Uh, so Nick Denton Nick is the Denton. guy who founded it. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and, and it just seems like you can make so much money from gossip, TMZ, Walker, oh. it's endless. Like people are just addicted in this country yeah. to what the Kardashians are doing. Yeah, well, I think what, it's very relaxing. And what relaxing. David Beckham's doing. Yeah, right. I, I have, I've become so screwed up in the head that I now, to relax, will watch TMZ. <laughs> like right before I'm going to bed, either that or like the most twisted episode of Law and Order SVU. Right. Like that's my uh -huh. bedtime story. Uh, I like <laughs> Law and Order. So I do, do I. Yeah. One of my, I you know, I've told you this before, and I've said this. You know, one of my guilty pleasures has always been Page Six. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And that, that I really. And Richard got, Johnson's back. Uh, yeah, I know. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really got into it, you know, back in the day of you there and Richard Johnson and when I worked for Howard, because Howard would always refer to it. Yeah. So I would come into Howard. My day was always like I'd get a coffee and, you know, I would go to page six and see what was there because Howard referred to it a lot. Right. So and, and I got addicted to it. I love like so I like I'm 46 and I know about Swizz Beats having tickets. I love, I love throwing out those names sometimes. Well, the it's younger a really people. Just, it's a really on here, man. I got you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a really good. Well, I mean, like if you look at it. Richard Johnson made Paris Hilton. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I mean, that was just like, keep dancing on the table naked, honey, and yeah. you'll just get more and more famous. <laughs> right, you and know? she did. Yeah, yeah, except now she's, you know. What's her deal now? Like, what, um, I, I, I mean, I think she's fine, I but I mean, like her, her lifetime place. show tanked and yeah. pretty much demolished the entire, you know, marketing budget of that network, as I understand it, or insiders really? say. Really? Yeah. yeah, okay. No, but I mean, like, that show did not do well. I'm and sure. Lifetime invested all of their budget into the promotion of Paris's I never spectacular. Even heard of it. Yeah, it was a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah, and it's just the, the I, I think because it didn't have, um, I think because she was trying to do it where she wasn't a joke, where it was more like showing the, uh -oh. thoughtful intellectual side or whatever. <laughs> she, she gotta have one first, that's the problem. <laughs> well, okay, so Ben Glebe told the funniest story on my podcast about being at a party with her. Yeah. And she just turned to him and she said, kill yourself. <laughs> Which, no. like, I just thought that was the funniest thing I've ever... That made me like Paris Hilton yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, <laughs> she's definitely someone who can give you that kind of advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I did Letterman with her once. I was the second guest. She was first. Was it the one where Letterman destroyed her? Uh, no, it was it was before that, I think. Oh, okay. You know, did he destroy... I don't know. He, he wasn't that bad. She didn't want to... She went on to promote her fragrance line and said, I don't want to talk about when I was in jail. And he said, really? Because that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> it wasn't that one. Okay, that was a clap. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm in hair and makeup, and her manager came in and, like, summoned me and said, Paris wants to meet you. And it was when I was on Howard and stuff. And I walked in there, and I said, okay, I got I to gotta do this. So she, like, had her whole dressing room set up. She had, like, a big pink towel set up, and there were, like, these fragrances. And, like, she, I shook her hand, and... She just she just felt rich. It felt like she never washed with zest yeah. ever. Like, you know, she had some special oils and everything. And she said, you're not going to make fun of me, are you? And I said, of course not. It's the you know? worst. <laughs> I'm like, and that's the first thing I did when I went out there was I had I, <laughs> my first five jokes were about her. I found that I was following her. <laughs> and I said, no, I wouldn't do that. Because, you know, because we have a lot of mutual friends. And she mentioned some guys I know that she knows. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Ew, you know, so man. she was trying to do the friendly meet and greet with you to yeah. afford herself protection. Like, look, um, He wouldn't make fun of me once I've said hi. Right, like, look, I'm so nice. nice to me. Like, I'm nice enough to yeah. acknowledge your existence. Right, right, right. <laughs> so don't make fun of me. Yeah. I, I didn't fall for it. Uh, but, nice. Uh, yeah. So, uh, all right, we got to take a break. Uh, we're going to come back with more. Man, I want to talk more about your uh, podcast and how <laughs> you, you must love doing it. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. It's well, a fun so thing. I interviewed Warren Light from Law & Order SVU. Oh, OK. And that's my favorite one that I've done because I'm such a huge fan of the show. <laughs> I, yeah, I like it, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to come back and talk with more Mandy Stadmiller after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.